Hello everyone, this is Alex Ipatov and this is the fourth video on the series about Rook Endgames. In this video I'm going to talk about the cutoff king versus BG pawns or CF pawns. In the first example we're going to examine the cutoff king versus BG pawns. So in this example white has an extra pawn which is on the G file and the king which is already on the sixth rank. So if it were white to play, rook a8 would have won on the spot, forcing the rook straight and king h7, g6, g7, g8. But now it's black to play and uh, the drawish setup here is bringing the rook back to the back rank and simply waiting with the rook on the 8th rank. White can try to check, but it's not enough to win. Rook a7 and black simply waits on the 8th rank with his rook. It's called a passive defense and it's enough to make a draw versus B and G pawns. Even after white pushes the pawn to the 6th rank nothing changes, black can still keep on waiting with the rook on the 8th rank because white has no plan of improvement. If rook g7 checked then simply king h8, Rook h7, king g8, and so on. White can't play g7 because of rook b6 check, and white even loses here. So, this is a draw. White has no way to improve the position, and the black's defensive setup is waiting on the 8th rank with the rook. Now, let's take a look at another example. What happens when black fails to establish the passive defense setup versus b and g pawns? So in this position the black king is on f8 and not on g8. So black cannot play rook f1 f8 because the f8 square is at the black king's disposal. So what to do? If black plays king g8, as we already know from the previous example, it's lost because white transposes into the winning pawn endgame by playing rook b8 check, rook f8, take, take, and king h7. And white wins. So this doesn't work. So now let's take a look at another move, rook a1, then white checks, king e7, now black loses because his king is on the long side, king h6, rook h1 check, king g7, g1, g6, white is simply transposing into the Lucina positions that we had already examined in the previous videos, king g8, rook g2, g7, rook h2, and now white wins by building the bridge in the so-called Lucina position. So what we learned from this example is that if black fails to establish the passive defense setup against BG pawns it's usually lost because white manages to kick the opponent's king away from the back rank and transpose into the Lucina position. Now let's take a look at another example. Now we're going to examine the cat of king versus C and F pawns. In this position white has an extra C pawn and it's winning. In this particular position and in general when the king is cut off versus C and F pawns the passive defense does not save the day for the defending side. Let's try to understand why does it happen. So white plays king b6, king d7 does not work because c6 check, king d8 and rook h7 and now white threatens to play rook a7, rook a8 check. So it's winning. Rook g1 does not help either because white has check. King d7 then c6 check. And it's winning because if king d6 then white has one more check. King e7 and c7 and white wins. So that move does not work either. So after king b6 let's see what happens if black tries to follow the passive defense method as black should do versus b and g pawns. But as I had already said, the passive defense method does not work against C and F pawns. White plays C6. Black waits on the 8th rank, rook F8. White brings the rook to the 7th rank. Black waits. And now white wins by checking on B7 first. If the black king goes to E8, one more check, king B8, and there is C7 check. That was not possible with B and G pawns, but it's possible with C and F pawns. That is a major difference which changes the evaluation of the position. So king c8 and then rook e8, king d7, 
and rook takes e8 and white promotes the queen. And after rook b7, king c8, it's the same, white plays rook a7. King b8 and c7, and we had already seen this position. So, as a rule, the passive defense setup does not make a draw versus uh, c and f pawns. Let's see one more example. So, what to do if your king is cut off and your opponent has c and f pawns? Then implement the same method that we had already covered in the first video. The Fielder method 2, keeping the rook from behind. So if white plays king b6, then the move that saves the day is rook c1, covering the c6 square. So now, after rook h8 check, king d7, white does not have c6 because it's covered by the rook from c1. So king b6, rook c1, white plays king c6, and now black implements the other defensive method, it's Long side, short side principle. Rook h8 check. King a7. King d6. There are a few moves that make a draw, even rook g1. But the easiest way is to play simply king b7. Following the same uh, defensive method as in Philidor. The c6 square is covered, and white cannot make any progress. He can make check, but then the king goes back to c8. If the king goes to c6, then once again king b8, keeping the king short and the rook on the long side. And if white pushes c6, then black starts checking from behind. This is Philidor method number one. That was the video on the cutoff king versus bg pawns or c and f pawns. Thank you for watching. It was Alex Ipatov.